All right, guys, it's time for another video, and this one I've been waiting to do for a while. This is my brand new 2023 Bass Cat Puma STS. Break in is complete, the boat is loaded down with tackle, but we're taking it for a speed run. But before we go for this speed run and find out what this boat is capable of, do me a favor, click subscribe down below and click get notifications that make sure our videos get into your feed. And if you want to, leave a comment down below. If you have questions about the Puma STS or you have experiences or you want to chat about it or, you know, figure out something particular about yours, leave a comment down below. We'll be happy to get to it. But for now, I think it's time to get moving and get this boat rolling to see what this Yamaha SHO 250 Bass Cat Puma STS is capable of. Well, today we're gonna to do a little walkthrough and actually a first speed test of the Puma STS Yamaha 250 SHO combo. I haven't seen any of these around in reality. and I'm sure there's a few of them around, but you see the majority of these packages come with Merc 250s or 300s as this boat is rated for a 300. So I've spent three days on the St. Lawrence breaking it in, never went past 3,500 RPMs, just idled around and tootled around and got the break-in done properly on this SHO. Uh, Bob's hydraulic jack plate on the back. This setup is right now pretty much over three quarters in both of the tanks, which are 60 gallons together, 30 gallons each, and it is loaded with tackle. So I'll go through all the compartments. I'll show you how I load everything, but I'm more curious to find out how well does this package run? I know what the whole shot is like, and it's incredible but how well does the package run overall? So let's do a couple speed runs and then we'll go through the boat and I'll walk you through from the nose of the boat all the way to the back, what I've put in this boat and what my impressions are so far. We're just going over a little shallow spot here. So I'll get past this and I'll show you the whole shot and we'll get to running the boat. All right, let's do this. That run, best number I saw, 77.2, I believe it was, at 5,850 RPMs. Uh, I've got a little bit of wiggle room here, and I don't want to push it too far, being this is the first time I'm running it, but I am incredibly comfortable with this boat. It is by far the easiest to drive. Uh, usually, if you load your boats properly, the Bass Cats, they are very easy to drive. I find that getting them to 75 is usually a very minimal affair. And then you have to do a little bit of work and know how to drive to get them into those high 70s, uh, you know, low 80s with an era, or, you know, I've had Puma FTDs that will run 81 mile an hour loaded. So this boat, super easy to drive, uh, 77 mile an hour loaded, 
three quarter tanks of fuel, a little bit over three quarter tanks in both tanks. Uh, nothing to complain about. This boat is a performer, it's easy to drive. So let's go through this boat from front to back and I'll let you know exactly what I've done and how I've set it up. Get all this off. Okay, so let's start at the nose of the boat. The Puma STS has an incredibly wide deck. This is a 96 inch beam, 20 feet, seven inches in length, this boat. And the STS stands for soft touch series hull. This is a new design that came out with the newest Jaguar and was such a success. I mean, that boat is rated for a 450, runs like the wind, is incredibly nimble for a 22 foot boat. So this boat at 20 feet, seven inches is an excellent, excellent platform. The thing about the front of this boat, let's start right at the bow. I've got this rigged with an 80 pound thrust Minn Kota Altrex. The reason I go to an 80 is this boat is very easy to maneuver. I've got lithiums. I don't really have to fight current. So I save myself the extra five pounds of going to a 112 because that bullet on the front of it is an extra five pounds. Now, depending on what manufacturer you're using, brushless motors will be lighter weight. And I somehow assume that in the very near future, Minn Kota is going to be coming out with a brushless as well. But for now, I'm running an 80 pound with a Mega Live with two graphs. The front of the Puma STS is designed to have your two graphs mounted directly to the thing, to the front end. It's got two steps that are angled properly inward. And if you want to direct mount your graphs, you can do that very easily with the Puma STS. For myself, because I'm on the road so often and I'm leaving my boat in parking lots that I have no idea what kind of critters lurk, uh, <laughs> I like to have my graphs quickly removable rather than having to undo both gimbals and take them off individually. I've got mine mounted on Geiger Tech's newest double stack at the front, which uses two arms that are independently turnable and the base is micro adjustable as well so I could get that perfect angle. I was able to offset my graphs with the bigger graph being the 12 up front, which I use for my Mega Live, and my smaller graph outside of that they follow the contour of the boat much better and brings the big graph, the Mega Live, more to the center of the platform in front of the pedal, which I absolutely love. Battery tender, quick removable plug at the front as well. And this boat also has a live sonar shutoff switch. So you can link your live sonar into that switch and shut the power to that, which for a lot of people who don't know, a lot of the live sonars, even though your units are off, they are still drawing power. The units themselves can be drawing power, so you can shut them off when you're not using them and you know, basically save on battery usage. Uh, cup holder at the front, like always. People ask why there's so many cup holders in a Bass Cat. Um, a, it's great to put your drinks in, but B, it also gives you access points. So when you're doing wiring and stuff like that, you can remove these cup holders and it gives you great access to areas that you cannot otherwise get into. Uh, like I said, battery switch up at the front and then your anchor and nav light controls at the front as well as two trim switch on the Damascus panels. So that's the front very nose of the boat. You'll also notice there are new magnetic rod straps uh, made by Bass Cat. These are Bass Cat proprietary straps. I love everything about them. Uh, if you're a barefooter though, you will notice that it will get the clip that remains screwed into the deck can be a bit of a problem, but it's really a problem with every kind of rod buckle I've ever seen, whether it's the bungees that have the little loop you tie into, or it's the uh, traditional retractable rod straps, or it's even the Velcro rod straps that have a metal D-ring on the one end of them. So something you really can't avoid. I like these, they're small profile. They don't take up much space. They securely lock and they're very easy to use. Coming back in the boat, uh, center net scabbard, which I have loved since I've owned my very first Puma FTD in 2010. Uh, my Jaguar in 2012 both had the net scabbard. I absolutely love that center net scabbard. It has a full size net with extended handle tucked into it. Easy access, easy to get to. On either side of the net scabbard, you've got two storage compartments. Uh, I use one of them for hard baits, another one for uh, safety gear. The reason I put my hard baits up there is because hard baits are generally the boxes are relatively light 
and uh, you're not getting in, you know, putting heavy stuff. I don't ever recommend throwing your heavier boxes up front like lead jig heads and plastics. I like hard baits, uh, stuff that is light terminal tackle, perfect place for it up there. Port and starboard rod lockers, uh, lots of room. I do spinning on one side, casting on the other. And then in the middle of the front deck, there is a giant storage. You can see it has that center divider, which is actually where the handle of your net fits into. So you can put tons and tons and tons of tackle in both sides of that. Again, that is where I keep all my hard baits and everything else. When you notice the handles or the latches on this boat, they are new as well. Uh, they coined them slam latches when they first came out, but really it is a ingenious little system because it has moved the mechanism to the outside lip of the, each compartment. With a traditional lock like we have on the very back compartments, you have to drill a hole inside for that latch to swing around and catch that lip. Well, it's also a leaking point in a lot of cases. So with these latches, the mechanism is moved to the lip of the actual door, which has a raised and gasket area around each and every one of them. So when you pop the latch, it's one hand operable. You push the button, you lift up the lid, you close the latch, and you can slam the lid down and it will lock on either side. Some of them on the big doors have two catches. Smaller doors obviously have one catch. Great system, lockable, uh, very, very easy to use. I'm absolutely in love with them. When you come down to the middle section or the cockpit section of the boat, giant cooler in the step and two tool holders on either side uh, in the front of that cooler. I've got a removable dual console in this one, so that console will come out when I'm filming a lot of times. It just gives me a lot more space. I love it. I love fishing with a single console. But the nice thing is if someone does want that second console or the wife is coming for a ride and she doesn't want to eat bugs at 77 miles an hour, the console goes in in just a couple of minutes. I put the reflex flooring in the deck area. Um, I like it because carpet tends to stay wet, especially down in this area. Uh, very easy to maintain, very easy to clean. You can power spray it, just do not use the focused beam. Nice and wide stream on it, you can do it. I like using simple green. I spray it down and use a brush on a drill, like one that you would use to clean your rims. And you can go over that and get it nice and clean really quickly. The great part is when it rains, it's not a soggy wet carpet. It dries off super quick. Uh, the seats, wave crusher seats in this one with storage underneath them. They have removed the tweeters out of the back of the seats, which is fine. The sound system is excellent. I've got the JL audio system in this boat. Um, you know, lots of storage. Having under the seat storage is a good bonus. Uh, I usually put snacks under one of them, like dry snacks that I want to keep, like mixed nuts and stuff like that. And the other one, I keep safety gear. So I've got everything easily accessible in case of, you know, anything going wrong. I've got my flares. I've got my fire extinguisher. I've got all my safety gear that I need for my specific area that I'm fishing in with this boat. Uh, I opted for the center console in between the seats rather than the third seat. Uh, I love this thing because it's basically my glove box. Even though when you have a dual console, you have a great big glove box. This is where I keep all my nitty gritty stuff. So, you know, a multi screwdriver and my uh, mapping chips uh, and stuff like that. My phone, my keys, all that stuff is securely latched into there. And if you pop the back latch of that and lift it up, there is another cooler underneath there. So what I like to do is I use the big cooler for my drink cooler, put lots of ice in it. I put ice packs inside this one and I use this one more as a dry cooler uh, for sandwiches and sandwich materials. So very, very simple cockpit layout. When you look at the dash of the Puma STS, it is your traditional Bass Cat dash. You can do this a number of ways. I've opted for the Geiger Tech dash mount. I like it because it makes my graph quickly removable. And because I only run a single graph on the front, I have the short arm. If you can run doubles, you can run duels as well and angle them inward. For myself, it's Geiger Tech all the way. It's a great product, billet aluminum, sturdy. And with our rough waters, I've never ever had an issue with these uh, graph mounts, so that's where I rest my hat. If I'm gonna put, you know, six or eight or $10,000 worth of equipment on something, I'm putting it right there. Uh, I've opted for, I have a 
RPM gauge, a water pressure gauge, a fuel gauge, and a trim gauge. Uh, and then I've got the Bob's hydraulic lift gauge on the bottom. You've got your Basscat Command Center here, your A10 touchpad, which has everything you need from air aerator, manual, five minute and three minute timed, your recirc manual, five minute and three minute timed, pump in, pump out. So that is your live well controls. When you move over, you've got the fan system. You can hear that running probably. The fan system is a fan blower that goes throughout all the compartments. So if you've got moisture in there and you want to dry them out, you can hit that as well. Below that, you've got security. Uh, and then you've got accessory one, accessory two, which usually controls your lighted handrails on this boat, which are billet aluminum. And then you have an, another accessory that you can hook something else up to. You've got fuel selection between the left and right gauge or tank. And then you've got bilge to set to manual or auto and obviously your lighting, which is nav and anchor, and your horn. <laughs> Loud. All right, beside the driver's side, there is a master shutoff on the bottom. There's also your live well selector from empty and auto, and you have a very handy pop-up cleat on either side for when you're docking. You don't have to run to the front and get to a cleat. You pull up to the dock, you have your little rope tied up to the side cleat right here, and then you can quickly tie off to the dock and then secure front and back when you have your bumpers on and it makes parking your boat super super simple uh, all right so that's it for this section here now when we move to the back let me get the kill switch off of this thing when we move to the back you got really really great system you've got the traditional triangular bass cat premium live wells which hold like 42 gallons of water i believe giant I mean, no problems. They are a one unit divided live well with spacer in it. Um, the fish are incredibly happy in it and it has never caused me any issues. I love having that volume of water. The more water you have, the more recirculation you have. The jet sprayers are designed to break the surface tension and really get the water moving inside there and create oxygen inside of it. On either side of that, you've got storage compartments. This is where all my heavier stuff goes. So plastics and jig heads and tungsten weights are in these back two compartments. Uh, slam latches on those. If you step forward again, you'll notice with the live wells, you get these little compression latches. I love them and I love them for a couple of reasons. A, they remove the latch from inside the live well. So when you're in rough water and if you fish enough rough water like I have, Sometimes you get your fish get beaten up in the live well, they hit the top. Well, you no longer have a nut and bolt and an assembly latch that the fish can hit themselves off of. So that helps. They've also put a, a neoprene on the lid of there with the beautiful Bass Cat logo in there that helps insulate and cushion the live wells as well. On either side of these back storage compartments, you've got little triangles that pop open with little trays and they are meant to be so if you have raptors or power poles where you would mount your pumps would be there it gives you access to them very easily without having to take up space in the back now the back end of this is where we talked about the configuration for the batteries so because this is a premium model it comes with aluminum battery trays designed by bass cat the dl 135 plus lithium dakotas are super super tiny uh like smaller than like basically a 24 size ba series battery uh, footprint but in here, I've got them locked down in the aluminum battery trays. I've got the 31 series AGM. Because these battery trays are on the side, it allows you access to all of your pumps. And that is critical. Too many times I've been in boats where if something goes wrong with a pump, you've got to remove batteries, you've got to remove uh, a tray, a covering, a charger, something that's covering your pumps. These two doors in the back, come off quickly they are quick release doors you can move them out of the way and then you can access your bilge area and work on pumps work on electronics whatever you have to get to very easily accessible on either side of your batteries are two 30 gallon tanks so 60 gallon fuel capacity in the puma sts and on either side of that there's a slot to have storage so i keep cleaning supplies on one side and I've got, you know, I can keep some tools or whatever else I want on the other side. Right at the back, I've added a uh, plug-in charger uh, extension so that I can plug in without taking my cover off or having to get into the compartments. 
and then you've got your fuel selector in the back middle. This is a new design in the back for the Bass Cat Puma STS, where traditionally we had a splash well that kind of went down and would hold water and had the two drains on the side. This has got that nice flat panel that they've mounted the fuel tank selector to, and that right beside that is where I've put my NOCO plug-in extension, so I have quick access to charge on the go. Um, billet aluminum has been the theme for Bass Cat for a number of years now. You could see even on the consoles, the side handles, there is a passenger grab handle now. First time I've ever seen that in a Bass Cat. Um, and then in the back, a grab handle next to the retractable ladder. Really a great system. And then on the back, I've got a Bob's jack plate. Uh, that is a Bass Cat six hole configured Bob's jack plate. And then attached to that, the 2023 Yamaha 250 SHO VMAX SHO with a 25 pitch T2 series SHO ventless prop. That is it guys. I mean, really the trick to doing this kind of thing when you're loading a bass cat is keeping your weight distribution even and then keeping your heavy stuff to the back and your light stuff to the front. If you can do that, it's gonna be a very, very easy driving boat. It's gonna be fun to drive. It's gonna be, you know, perform incredibly well, handle incredibly well, but I will tell you this. If you have not taken a ride in a Puma STS, go to your local dealer or call your local Bass Cat guy that has one because they are building these things a lot. This has become the most popular model in the Bass Cat lineup and for very good reason. Like I said before, I feel this is the future of what Bass Cat is going to be about. Uh, performance, great dry ride like we've always expected, speed like you expect from a Bass Cat, quality of build. Oh yeah, and it's the only company in the industry that offers a fully transferable lifetime warranty. Not to the original owner, not to the second owner, not to the third owner, to every owner. All other manufacturers offer lifetime warranty to the original owner, and if the boat is sold within the first five years of its existence, it offers 10 years from the original date of purchase to the second owner, and the third owner has nothing. Bass cats are fully transferable, no matter how many times they're sold, no matter how old they are. Stringer, hull, and transom covered under their lifetime warranty. There is no wood, there is no plastic in these boats. It is fiberglass and aluminum lids, and it is built like no other. If you haven't seen any of the videos on the build process between the vacuum molded or infused stringer systems and transom to the boxing system to how they do everything, go check it out on the Bass Cat website. Uh, I've been running them since 2010. I believe in this company 1000%. I believe they build the best product on the market. And I can tell you this, it's the most fun to drive. So there you have it, guys. That is my breakdown of the 2023 Bass Cat Puma STS. Uh, this one's colors for those interested. Uh, dark gray gel, midnight mist, and silver mist is the package I've done with this one. This is my military package looks incredible truly truly thought out by fishermen for fishermen great boat guys check it out uh, do me a favor if you haven't click subscribe down below we do videos talking about new product all the time uh it's been a, a quiet couple months but iCast is right around the corner so there will be a bunch of new products set to hit the market so do me a favor uh, click subscribe if you can click get notifications that helps us get to where we want to get to and uh yeah, if you have any comments or you have any experiences in a Puma STS or you have any questions about it, hit me up in the comments down below. Leave a comment. I'll be more than happy to chat with you about it. Uh, I think you guys would absolutely love the performance and the fishability and the stability of the new Bass Cat Puma STS. Hope everybody's doing well. I hope everybody's staying safe. Most of all, guys, I hope you're all catching fish. We'll talk to you soon.